Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube clip and today's clip is all about the use of a tripod and why you would ever want to use a tripod when you're taking your photos and of course if you already know why you need a tripod well you might want to skip this video but there's a lot of people out there that always ask me well, why do you have to use a tripod when you're taking photos and uh, today's segment is part of 300 second Thursday so let's get started tripod so why would you want to use a tripod when you're taking photos? Well, the number one reason, of course, is for camera stability. Quite often when you're out taking photos, your shutter speed will fall below 1 60th of a second. And a lot of people generally regard 1 60th of a second uh, and below as being very difficult to keep your camera nice and steady when you're trying to take a photo at those kind of exposure times. And the reason why you would end up with an exposure time of 1 60th of a second or greater is because when you're taking landscape photos, you should be shooting at a higher aperture number, which means you're letting in less light. Shooting at a higher aperture number allows you to get more in focus, and there's a video coming up about that soon. However, for the meantime, if you're taking landscape photos, you generally just need to know that you should be shooting at an aperture of, let's say, for example, f8, uh, f11 even f16 to be able to get more in focus in other words everything in focus in the scene from what's right in front of you to the distance it might be a mountain range in the distance it could even be uh, clouds or um, or maybe even waves or something on the horizon if you're down at the beach and quite often that means that your camera's shutter speed will fall below 1 60th of a second there's a couple of ways that you can bring that shutter speed back up of course uh, one is to make a wider aperture which means less becomes in focus or you can boost your camera's ISO or sensitivity to the available light which will give you a faster shutter speed sure but the big trade-off with that is that you will end up with a noisier looking photo or a grainier looking image and of course to overcome that you can continue shooting at 1 60th of a second and below simply by putting your camera on a tripod. Uh, now, there are literally thousands of tripods on the market, and to be perfectly honest, uh, you don't need to spend a heck of a lot of money on a tripod. Um, you know, you can pick up a very, very good tripod for under $100 that will do the job, that will keep your camera steady, as I say, for those shutter speeds, once your shutter speed reaches below 1 60th of a second. However, I recommend uh, a half decent tripod these days should set you back between $150 to $350. A tripod like that will give you a lot more, um, a lot longer life. Uh, so the longevity of the tripod will be a lot better. Uh, they're generally made a little bit better. And generally, a slightly more expensive tripod will be made of better materials, can sometimes be even lighter weight, so they're easier to carry around. But the moving parts on the slightly more expensive tripods generally last a little bit longer. Maybe a little bit less plastic in the manufacturer, manufacturing, uh, maybe a little bit more quality control over manufacturing, and that's generally where you see your money go. Now, a company like Manfrotto, for example, uh, make a range of tripods from very basic entry-level tripods right through to high-end professional stuff. And quite often we'll recommend a Manfrotto tripod uh, around the $300 to $500 price bracket, mainly because the Manfrotto tripods are made so well. That's why you spend a little bit more on um, a Manfrotto tripod. Um, there are a lot of other uh, high-end brands as well, and by no means Manfrotto aren't paying me to say that, but um, I've been using Manfrotto tripods for quite a while. Um, particularly their, their higher and heavier weight tripods and one particular tripod that I've got uh, I've had for around about 12 years now and it's been absolutely brilliant and I probably wouldn't shoot with anything else however it is a bigger heavier tripod um, probably should go and get it so you can have a look and here it is this is my Manfrotto tripod this is the 055 X Pro B tripod uh, numbers don't worry about what the numbers mean. All you need to know is that a tripod like this, which I bought in 2006, is still going very, very strong. Uh, as you can see, it's a big, heavy tripod. Um, it will take a big camera, uh, one of the, some of the heavier SLR models. Um, it'll take a, an SLR camera with quite a heavy lens as well. It has a fantastic quick release plate. It also has a ball head at the top. When this tripod is fully set up, which I will do nice and quickly, So you can see this tripod is full height, so it basically comes up, so when the legs are fully extended, this tripod comes up 
to my eye level, which I love because I can don't have to bend down or crouch down to see the photos. Uh, also, it has um, a ball head, which is basically this. You just turn this little dial here, and then I can position my camera wherever I want. Probably do us all a favor by putting a camera on it. So as you can see, with a camera on, um, it makes for quite a bulky setup. But if I ever want to reposition this camera, all I have to do is unlock this, and then the camera moves very, very freely. So this is on a ball head, and I can move this camera wherever I want and lock it into place. So if I'm on uneven ground and that sort of stuff, I can make those small adjustments very, very quickly. It's great for a landscape setup. It also means that I can point the camera straight down if I want to, or I can shoot it in the portrait position like this as well. So very, very fast, very, very easy, very quick to lock the camera into position like I can here with this tripod. However, this outfit in the current uh, incarnation of this model, this is close to a $600 tripod. So. Uh, what I'm getting at there is you don't necessarily need to spend that kind of money when a tripod like like this little Velbon tripod, which is, as I say, retails around the $150 mark, will do a very similar job. As you can see, though, the ball head on this is a lot smaller, which means it can lead to a few instability problems. If you're going to be using a tripod, you're going to need something that's relatively solid, particularly if you're starting to shoot at really long shutter speeds. This day and age, there's a lot of people shooting long exposure stuff. And when I say long exposure, like out to three, four, five minutes, and that's where the bigger Manfrotto tripods really come into their own because they can stay absolutely rock, rock solid for long periods of time without necessarily having to um, you know, readjust things. The bigger Manfrotto tripods, like the one I was just showing you, can um, stay stable for longer periods of time because they're a little bit heavier, um, small amounts of wind and things like that aren't really going to bother it, whereas a tripod like this, they're a lot easier and lighter weight to carry around, however, nowhere near as stable. So there's a bit of a trade-off when it comes to your tripods. Um, so as just getting back to the initial point, why would you want to use a tripod? And it really comes down to shutter speed. If you want to shoot longer exposure, uh, photographs, you're going to need a tripod to be able to keep your camera nice and steady. So that's it for tonight's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, subscribe if you like uh, what you're seeing on this channel. Um, just a little update on our subscribers. We didn't quite make the 50 subscribers by the end of March as I was hoping. We did get to 49 though. So there you go. That's a little achievement for us. Um, there will be loads more content coming out on this channel real soon. So as I say, if you want to subscribe, hit the like button, maybe share the video around. Feel free to do so and we'll see you next time uh, on the channel. Cheers.